All right, so this should be a review of all chapter 11. It's good to do that. We're moving on towards the exam. We just have, this, this exam is going to cover 10, 11, and 12, right? You know what it is? Or 9 as well? No, 9 was on the last test, right? I'm getting a little confused myself. This is covering 10, 11, and 12, this quiz. Well, this, this quiz is just 11. But the exam is 10, 11, and 12. We'll do 12 on Wednesday. All right, are phone calls equally likely to occur any day of the week? The day of the week for each of 175 randomly selected phone calls was observed. What can be concluded? Levels of is 0.05. Okay, what, what should we do here? What kind of test is this? It's a goodness of fit. Yeah. Fit with what? What are they trying, right? With fit, we're trying to compare two things, see if they match, fit. So fit with what? Here's, here's some numbers. They're giving me some numbers. They want me to test if those fit with what? What am I going to do? Yeah. Equally likely. What does that mean, equally likely? Same for every day, huh? So you take the 175 phone calls that come in in a week, 175, divide it by seven days. Somebody got a number there for me? 25. 25. 25. So that would be the expected. That's what you're expecting. If, if they come in the same for every day, then you would expect to get exactly 25 calls every day, Monday through, or Sunday through Saturday, 25 calls a day. Do you see how I came up with that? It was all about equally likely, and I think I put that on your goodness of fit notes, exam four notes, number 10, I think I put that there for you, maybe, maybe I didn't, uh, yeah, I, yeah, I said it says equal frequency is what I wrote, total number of values divided by number of categories, yeah, 175 divided by 7. Right? So for equally likely, we're saying, does that fit? Does what we observed fit with what we expected from equally likely? So how do we do good? So this is a, this is a goodness of fit test, isn't it? Goodness of fit. How do we do a goodness of fit test? If you look back at your notes, your exam for notes number 10 says that for a goodness of fit test, you need to do H-O. H-O is that they fit. H-1 is that they do not fit. And, and, and that's the same thing. That's the same thing as saying uniform. That's what we're saying, that our data fits with uniform, right? Same all the way. And H-1 don't fit. So, not uniform. We uh, go there, and how do you do a goodness of fit test according to number 10? You've got to put the values in L1 and L2. We don't use the matrix. The matrix is for the other two sections, the homogeneity and the independence. We put the data for goodness of fit in L1 and L2. We just have the two lines of data. So, put that in your calculator in L1 and L2. If you have a TI-83, look at the exam four notes. If you have a TI-83, remember you hit program. You hit the PRGM button, and you find the program, the, what's it called, the uh, CHI-GOF, and just hit enter. Whereas if you have a TI-84, you've got to hit stat and tests and then chi-square GOF for the TI-84, and then you've got to put in the degrees of freedom if you have a TI-84. How do you determine degrees of freedom? Do you remember? Yeah, number of categories minus one. Yeah, so I'll put it up here. Degrees of freedom is number of categories. This is just for the people with TI-84s. Minus one. How many categories? There's seven days in the week. Minus one, six. So your degrees of freedom, you'd have to let that be six. 
If you just have an 83, though, it's actually easier. You just do the program and it goes. So I just did it. I got a p-value that is 0.01557. I don't know how many decimals they want. 0.557, 8, 5, 8, whatever. So, so is that question on that? So then we have to determine, is that P low or not low? That's pretty low. I don't even know what the stimulus level is, but, oh, there it is, 05. Yeah, so that P is low. That's certainly below 05. So the P is low. P is low. You know what that means. HO must go away. So bye-bye HO. Cross it out. H1. Do not fit, and that's strong evidence, huh? They do not fit. There's strong evidence that they do not fit. You don't get the same number of calls every day of the week. Strong evidence that they do not fit. So sufficient. Sufficient. Do not fit. Not uniform. Is that making sense there? Right, because I got a really low P, 0.01. So that's a low P. If the P is low, the null must go. So I crossed out the null, which said they fit. I kept the H1 that said they don't fit. And that's strong evidence, right? Weak and strong. So that's strong evidence, sufficient evidence that they do not fit, meaning they're not uniform. Why? Because this does not fit with uniform. So it's not uniform. You don't get the same number of calls every day of the week, of course, huh? Strong evidence that you don't. Is that good? We doing well? Questions on that one? I'll move on. Question two. A die is rolled 120 times to see if it is fair. The table below shows the outcomes. Do we do something like that? Talk about that? Yeah, we did that problem, right? Let's move on. We did that actual question. So that's just another goodness of fit, isn't it? Let's move on um, to number three. Distribution of majors at the college is shown below. So 24% major in math or science, 33 arts, humanities, 34 in economics, 9 in others. And then, then they, they grab 400 athletes. And, they, and, and the 400 athletes... 85% major in math, or no, 85 of them, that's not a percentage, huh? 85 of them major in math, 150 in math and science, 156 in arts, 118 in business and econ, 41 in other. What can be concluded at the students level? Perform that, well, what's the question? Did they, did they ever actually ask a question? I didn't see a question. So it gives me the HO. The distribution of majors is the same as the distribution of majors for the general population. So the distribution is the same. So it's a, it's a goodness of fit test again, isn't it? We're seeing if it fits. Do the athletes have the same percentage of majors as the non-athletes? How are we going to do this one? This one's a little tricky, actually, isn't it? So I do yeah. Is that 24% of 400? Because are they asking the same amount? Okay. Yeah, that's what we got to do. That's exactly the, the tricky part about this one. Yeah, to see what, um, what's being asked, what Zach's asking. That's the tricky question. What do we, we're going to do goodness of fit. Once we get it all lined up, it'll be the same, but the beginning part's tricky. But I did put it right on the notes to help you. So if you look at the notes from um, goodness of fit, um, notice I said, if they say category, if you're looking at number 10 on the exam four notes under goodness of fit, you see at the bottom, right above the calculus of where I say category percent listed. Does everybody see what I'm talking about? Category percent listed. And I say each category percentage multiplied by total number of values. Do you see that? So on the notes, on the exam four notes, exam four notes, under number 10, goodness of fit, I give you the information 
that if they give you category percentages, which, this, which is what they're doing here exactly, category percent, that what you need to do is take each percent times total number. Each percent times total number. So see how this is 24 percent? And there's how many total number? 400 total athletes? So I've got to find out what 24% of the 400 athletes is. Right? Because, because um, that'll be what we expect. So 0 0.24, 0.24 times 400 is, um, I think it's 96, isn't it? 96, right? And then the next one, 0 0.33 times 400. And that's coming out um, 132. And the next one, 0 0.34 times 400. 136? And last one, 0 0.09 times 436. Are you getting that okay? This is tricky. Are you tracking with me? There's another wrinkle. I just realized there's one more curveball coming. Are we okay with that curveball first off? So see, we have two different kinds of goodness of fit tests. Have you noticed it? Let me go back to number one. This is one kind where they say equally likely. So you just take the total number, 175, divided by the number of categories, seven days in the week, and I got 25. So the expected, we expected them to be equal. They all were 25. And I put that on your exam four notes. I said, says equal frequency. You just take total number divided by number of categories. That's the same thing in number two. Right? Die is rolled 120 times. See if it's fair. Well, what does it mean if it's fair? They'll be equal. Same number of ones, twos, threes, fours, fives, and sixes if the die is really fair. So you'll take 120, divide by six different. That should be 20 per. So for number two, these should all be 20. That's you, you, what you expect to happen if the die is really fair. 120 rolls should be 20 for each of the six different numbers that come up on a die. If you roll that die 120 times and it's truly fair, we expect to get about 20 of each of the numbers, right? So question one and question two are both the same. They're both saying equally likely, equally likely. Same, you know, fair die. Each of the numbers comes up equal. That's how you calculate what you expect. Notice in a goodness of fit test, we're always comparing what we observed with what we expect. And, um, and then finally, on number three, they're not equally likely. We're not saying it's the same number, same percentage of math, science, and arts and humanities. We're giving specific percentages. 24% of the whole school majors in math and science. 33% of the whole school majors in art and humanities. 34% of the whole school majors in economics. And 9% of the whole school majors in something else. So when you're giving category percentages, you multiply that each of those percentages, the decimal version, by the total number to find out what you expect. This is what we'd expect. If, you, if the athletes are just like everybody else, then we would expect 96 percent of the 96 of the 400 to major in math and science, because that's 24 percent of the two. Of the 400. You tracking with me? We would expect 132 of them to major in arts and humanities, 136 of them to major in econ, and 36 to major in something else. Out of the 400, that's what we would expect. What did we actually observe? Well, in reality, 85 of the 400 majored in math, and 156 in arts and humanities, 118 in econ, 41 in other. That's what actually happened. That's what we observe. And so now we want to test 
does what we observed fit well with what we expected? That's what we're always doing in a goodness of fit test. How are we doing? You tracking with me? Make sense? See the two different types. This is what you'll have to recognize on the exam. We'll talk about it next week as we go over the practice exam. It's good even now. You're gonna, I, I promise that you they'll be both on the exam we take uh, next Wednesday. There'll be a goodness of fit where it says same for each category and a goodness of fit where I list out the percentages. And you have to multiply, 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 multiply to find the numbers that we expect. Now, here comes the next wrinkle. <coughs> to do the goodness of fit, we have to put one list in L1 and another list in L2, and you can't mix them up. It matters which is which. Look on the notes. It's all right there for you. Which one has to go in L1 on the exam four notes, part 10? Observed is L1. So this is L1. This is L2. They're backwards of the normal order they give them to us in. That's why I wanted to point out this curveball could get you. You have to put the observed in L1. So this is L1. And these numbers here are L2. So normally they give us the observed first and then the expected. So we don't even really think about it. You know, we just put the first list in L1 and the second in L2. But this time they're being, going out of order. It's good practice for the test. They're pushing us a little harder now. They're not lining up everything quite so conveniently. So we can think a little more carefully. So the observed, as it says on the exam, four notes, put observed values in L1. And calculate expected values and put in L2. So the expected have to go in L2. So to freedom on this one. You might, so degrees of freedom, remember, is the number of categories minus one. So there's four categories, right? Minus one. So the degrees of freedom is three. If you need that, the TI-83 people don't even need to mess with that. So I'm getting a p-value, um, 0.0335. Did you guys get that? Oh, one of three places. So, oh, bless you, 034. Oh, it rounds 034. Oh, Did you guys get that p-value? Good. And now, what's the conclusion? Well, what was our significance level? I can't see anything now. Oh, 0. 0.05. So, um, that is certainly below 0. 0.05. Right? 0. 0.03 is below 0. 0.05. So, the p is low. HO must go away. The null must go away. Where's the null? What was the null? I didn't even write the null. So I could write, you know, for, for goodness of fit, the null's always fit, and the H1 uh, does not fit. So, and, and, and you know, it's always strong and weak, weak and strong evidence, weak, evidence, strong, evidence. So in this case, we are saying the null must go away. Bye-bye, null. Keep the H1. They do not fit. Athletes do not major. A athletes choose different majors. Do not fit. There's strong evidence that the majors chosen by athletes are different than the majors chosen by the general population. Does not fit. Strong evidence. So that's our conclusion. Does not fit. Sufficient evidence. Strong evidence to prove it doesn't fit. This data is so strong that we believe overall it's representative of the fact that athletes do choose different majors than the general population. Is that good? Doing good on that? Questions on that one? All right, I'm going to move on if you're good. So number four, the racial distribution for the state of Texas is shown below. White, 45%, these are percentages. 
45%, Hispanic 38, black 12, other 5. And then you're interested in seeing if the distribution at your college fits the distribution of Texas. I doubt it. Um, so here is our college. 100, um, 300 students surveyed, 152 white, 106 Hispanic, 25 black, 17 other, out of 300. Do they fit? So what are we going to do to determine if they fit? What kind of test? Fit? Goodness of fit. Now, this is just like the last one. They're giving me percentages, huh? So just like the last one, I'm going to have to take each category percentage and multiply it by the total number of people that were surveyed, 300. See, that's just like the last problem. Three and four are the same. So I'm, need, I'm going to need to take 0.45 times 300. Is that 135? And 0.38 times 300 people surveyed. And this is what we expect. This is what we expect. Um, I don't know if that is... 114? 114. And 12% of 300, 36. And 5% of 315. So 135, 114, 36, and 15. Those are our expected values. That's what we would expect to see if our college fits with the state of Texas. But this is what we actually observed at our college, 152, 106, 25, and 17. So see how we're doing just what we did last time? Which one is L1? I forget, honestly. It's observed. Yeah, L1 is the observed, and L2 is the expected. So make sure you put them in that right order, and on you go. Can I skip to the next one? The rest is the same, right? Is that good? Do the rest the same. Draw the conclusion. Find a p-value. On with question number five. Are hair color and body type independent? Hair color and body type, independent. So there they're saying it, huh? Independent. What kind of test am I going to do? Test for independence. Yeah. So... Hair color and body type are independent. Remember, HO is always independent. H1 is always dependent. They're giving them to us. What are you going to do on this one? You're going to take this table and do what with it? Put it in your calculator in a matrix, huh? That's going to be a matrix. Remember, for test for independence, put a matrix. That's a what? A 4 by 3? It's a 4 by 3 matrix. Put it in your calculator as a 4 by 3 matrix, and then you're going to you're going to do a chi-square test, right? Do the chi-square test on that matrix. Rest is the same. Once you realize what it is, you know, it's a chi-square test for independence. Just put the matrix. Let's see number six here. Six is fitness trainer is interested in investigating whether ethnicity and first exercise activity that members engage in are dependent. So here it is again. Test for independence, right? HO is independent. H1 is dependent every time. Put this in as a matrix. It's a matrix. It's a, what, a four by three again. Put it in. Do your chi-square test. Get your p-value, draw your conclusion. All right, we're rolling. Number seven, a psychologist is interested in testing whether there is a difference in the distribution of personality types for business majors and social science majors. The results of the study are shown below. A difference, a difference in personality type based on your major. So... Look at the HO. It says the distribution of personality types for business majors is the same. 
So you know what this is a test of? Homogeneity. Sameness. Sameness, yeah. <laughs> HO is basically saying they're the same, and H1 is saying they're different. Yeah, that's all it is. It's saying, hey, you know, if you're a business major or a social science major, either way, you're, you know, you're going to get the same kind of distribution of different personalities. It's not going to matter. And H1 is saying, yes, it is. They'll be different. Business majors have different kind of personalities than social science. So HO is saying same, H1 is saying different. How do we do this kind of test? We take this matrix and we put it in our calculator. This is a, this is a test for homogeneity. But that's exactly like a test for independence. It's exactly the same. We just put in um, the matrix which is what? 2 by 5? You remember you go down first and then across. So it's a 2 by 5 matrix. Put it in your calculator. Do the chi-square test. Hit the buttons. Get the p-value. If the p is low, the null must go. Same old stuff. It's exactly like independence. Is that good? HO is always same. H1 is always different. Have you noticed in these tests, let me give you something to help overall, and I'll say this again next week when we're doing the practice exam. Have you noticed the test name is always HO? Let's go through the three tests we've learned. Test for independence. What's HO whenever you do a test for independence? HO is always independent. It fits the name. When you do a test for homogeneity, there it is, there's HO, independence again. When you do a test for homo, homo means same. What's HO? Same. When you do, what's the other one? Test for goodness of fit. What's HO? They fit. Have you seen? If you want to just memorize them all that quick, the name of the test always goes in HO. Every time. And H1's the opposite. Goodness of fit, homogeneity, and independence. Those are always your HO, aren't they? I just noticed that this time. It's like, I don't know, 50th time I've taught stats. But this time I'm like, hey, the name matches the HO. I'll mention that to the students. You always pick up a little bit more. There's a really subtle... We don't have to do anything different. You really don't have to do anything different. Behind the scenes, there's a, a technicality. Um, this is all coming from one population. You're looking... Um, oh, no, no. Let me... Let me, let me um, is that true? Let me... It, it's about the populations. So for homogeneity, you're taking uh, actually two different populations, a business, a group of business people, and a group of social science people. Whereas when you're doing independence, it's one population. It's all the same group. It's just how many are white, Hispanic, black, and other, and, and, and how many work on different exercise equipment. It's all coming from the same population. Whereas homogeneity is taking two different groups, business majors, social science majors. In the end, we do the same stuff in the calculator. But that's why they have two different names. Questions. So if you do higher stats, they kind of get a little more specific. But for us, that's good enough. Question A. Do men and women select different breakfasts? We did this question. We probably did all these questions. Do men and women select different breakfasts? Yes. Well, I think the answer was yes, wasn't it? Distribution <laughs> is the same for men and women, not the same, different. So it's homogeneity, isn't it? Again, it's a chi-squared test. You put in the matrix. The matrix is 2 by 4. 2 by 4 matrix. Put it into your calculator. Do a chi-squared test. Crank it out. Homogeneity. Is that good? Is that making sense? 